Mission. It's rather related to transmission of, of uh, forces and power via pulleys, uh, but this is uh, essentially a belt drive. Um, which is very closely related to a chain drive and uh, the following problem could be either a belt drive or a chain drive and, and uh, it doesn't really matter uh, for our purposes. Of course, in reality, there are differences, uh, but, but for the purposes of this problem, uh, it doesn't really matter. So here's a setup of the problem. Um, I'm going to phrase it in terms of a problem. Uh, you have uh let's call this one pulley or one sort of driver um, and another pulley essentially um, and these objects are connected by a belt or a chain so it goes it's uh, this is taut and it sort of goes around this pulley, attaches to this pulley and goes around this pulley as well. Okay, goes on the outside of these things. And again, let's call this center O1, this center O2, let's call this pulley one, pulley two. Um, so this thing, is a belt or a chain chain as in like a bicycle chain or it could be a belt that goes over to pulleys um, okay um, we can uh, label some uh, radii here let's call this r1 let's call this r2 okay Um, let's say the pulley is a uniform disc, mass M1, radius R1, like we said, uh, disc, uniform disc, mass M2, radius R2, Um, what else is given? Um, so you can say I about O1 is uh, M1 R1 square by 2 I O2 is M2 R2 square by 2 um, so the other things that are given are that uh, the belt let me uh, write it in a different color. Um, the belt or chain is inextensible. And massless. And is always taut, in other words, is in tension. Um, and does not slip against the pulleys. Okay. Now let's say uh, part one. Part one. Um, say uh, the police have 
um, angular velocities. Well, let's say pulley one has uh, angular velocity omega one. What is the angular velocity of uh, pulley two? Uh, in terms of, let's say omega one, R one, and R two. My alarm is going on, so I'm going to switch that off. Okay, um, Okay. so how do you find that out? Uh, this is rather similar to gears. Um, so let's uh, just generate some notation here. So let's say we have um, angular velocity omega 1, and let's give it some notation, angular velocity omega 2 there. And, um, and the key idea is, again, no slip. What does no slip mean? So I sort of drew this picture uh, roughly, let's say. Uh, so what does no slip mean? It means that, well, of course, because the uh, belt is inextensible, every point on this belt has the same velocity. And then the belt touches this point, uh, which is tangent to uh, the belt. And at that point, the belt will have the same velocity as uh, the disc because there is no slip. Similarly, the belt touches this point uh, uh, on, on, on this disc, which is tangent to this disc. Uh, and again, um, the uh, belt velocity is going to be equal to the point that it just starts touching at uh, this uh, on this pulley, okay? So let me uh, draw a bigger picture to show all that. So let's say we have a big pulley. Um, um, a little pulley here. And we have this tangent, which is basically the belt. The belt is basically a tangent. Common tangent to the two circles. Okay, and let's call this point P1 let's call uh, where it just barely touches uh, the circle P2. Uh, the P1 and P2 are not necessarily uh, uh, right on top of uh, uh, the point O1 and O2, but rather they can be um, a bit off, okay? So the, there is velocity of P1. Let's call this point B. Okay, the point on the belt, any point on the belt. So B is any point on the belt uh, P1 and P2 um, any point on the belt between P1 and P2 P1 and P2 uh, are where the belts belt is tangent to the circles. Okay, 
um so no slip equals v belt or vb uh will be equal to vp1 okay so every point on the belt is, has the same velocity because the belt is inextensible and then specifically this point uh is going to be equal to the belt velocities and this point is also equal to the belt velocity because this is no slip okay so vp1 equals vp2 okay um good and and if you want to uh uh look at the velocity direction uh if this direction is n uh the direction along the belt then we have uh you can think about it uh if this is omega 1 this is r1 and this is omega 2 then we have uh vp1 just by the fact that uh this is a rigid body it's going at omega 1 this has uh radius r1 and let's say this direction this uh e theta direction is basically uh n then um we have necessarily or or you can call it e theta if you want um let's just call it e theta for simplicity uh where this is uh where this is theta but but in any case let's just call it n for now uh vp1 will be equal to um r1 omega 1 n and vp2 will be equal to r2 omega 2 n right so it's basically going to be r2 omega 2 um is going to be the velocity and then it's going to be in the same direction as uh, all these lines uh, these tangents and lines and so on um so anyway so basically what we have is r1 omega 1 equals r2 omega 2 just like in gears except uh in gears the two th- uh, two uh, gears were spinning in opposite directions here uh the two things are going in the same direction um So that's it. Uh omega 2 by omega 1 equals r1 by r2 or omega 2 equals omega 1 r1 by r2. So that's the answer that was desired. Uh for part 1, okay? Um Now let's look at part 2. Okay. Um so this was all kinematics, okay? So this was all kinematics. Um part 1 is what would be called uh kinematics. Right? So I didn't we didn't talk anything about uh forces or moments or moment of inertia is just all uh, sort of speak geometry. Uh part 2, uh let's say um at pulley 1 uh is acted upon by torque uh let's say tau 1 k uh at uh center o1 no torque uh at axle o2 on pulley 2 uh given that uh determine 
the angular velocities, angular accelerations, of pulleys one and two, okay? Uh, now we're asked something about the angular accelerations of these two things. Um, so how, what, how do we do it? Uh, we first need to draw a free body diagram. So let's, so let's draw a free body diagram. We have, again, a big pulley, a little pulley, um, we have some reaction forces we can include gravity or not doesn't matter um, because gravity is really going to be borne by the um, uh, axle um, okay so let's just um, we, we're going to have some reaction forces or, uh, or um, maybe you should use the letter N. Let me use the letter N. N, Y, 1. N, X, 1. We maybe have M1, G1. Um, and we have uh, N, X, 2 and Y2, uh, M1, M2, G2. Then we have a force due to uh, this belt. Let's call this um, T1. T1. Uh, because this belt is massless and, and uh, taut and uh, uh, essentially massless and taut and inextensible, uh, these tensions uh, are equal. I guess our main, the main thing that you need is that uh, there is taut. Okay, so that's tension one. And then tension two is like this. And, and we have a moment here, uh, tau one K or something. Okay, so that's the uh, those are the free body diagrams. Let's do uh, some of all moments about um, O1 and some of all moments about O2, okay? Uh, some of all moments about O1 equals I O1 alpha 1 K. So we have, uh, we can sort of drop the case. I guess everything is going to be a K, uh, but K, um, tau one, and then we have um, T one times R, right? So T one is times R, and that's going to be a uh, clockwise moment. So we have a minus T one R one, and then plus T two R two, um, Right, so this T2 is tangent to uh, the circle, and so the moment arm is basically radius R. Um, so plus T2 R2. Um, and those are really the only moments. The other forces are acting through the center of mass O1, so these reaction forces and gravity are acting through that point, so they do not have any moments about that point, and uh, that's fine. Uh, so, and that's why we said we can ignore gravity or not, doesn't matter for this problem, but uh, in any case, we get, um, we can plug in um, for the moment of inertia, we can plug in M1 R1 square by two if we want, or we can leave that until the end. Um, let's leave that until the end. Um, so let's just call that I O one alpha one. Okay. Okay. Gets canceled. So we have tau one uh, minus T one R one plus T two R two equals I O one alpha one. Uh, we can do the exact same thing for this uh, 
pulley or uh, disc sum of all moments uh, about O2 for that pulley equals I O2 alpha 2 K where recall what we're saying is this is alpha 1 this is alpha 2 okay um, So we have, what are all the moments? Uh, there is no moment, uh, there is no torque being applied here, we said, but the moments are basically due to these tensions, these belts pulling it. Uh, so we have tau T1, uh, R2, right? So this T1 is acting at the radius R2 and, and this uh, anti-clockwise. So we have T1, R2 uh, minus T2, R2. Uh, well, actually, I, I made a mistake here. It looks like um, both both these uh, tensions are acting at R2. Um, so it, both of them should have been, sorry, R1. Uh, so both of them should have been R1 here. I made a mistake there. Uh, that should have been R1. That should have been R1. Similar, just like both these tensions are acting at R2, okay? Um, right, so both these tensions are acting at the radius R2, so they're basically producing moment T1, R1, R2, T2, R2. Okay, let's just put that in there. Uh, they are all in the K direction, and that's going to be equal to IO2 alpha 2K. K gets cancelled, and we just are left with um, T1 minus T2 R2 equals i o two alpha two okay so that's equation number two this is equation number one so equation number one can perhaps be re slightly rewritten as um uh plus or minus t one minus t two r one equals I O one alpha one. Okay, that's equation number one. Um, what do we need to do? We need to uh, solve for alpha one and alpha two. So the unknowns. Or alpha one, alpha two. Um, what else is an unknown here? The tensions. Uh, T one, and T two are also unknown. Um, what else is an unknown? Um, well, that's about it. There are four unknowns here. And we have two equations. That's kind of um, weird. Uh, but uh, we have one more equation from the kinematics. We have omega 2 by omega 1 is R1 by R2 or R2 by R1. So alpha 2 by alpha 1 is... Uh, uh, the corresponding uh, radius ratio. So what we have is alpha 1 R1 plus, uh, equals alpha 2 R2. Okay, so that's equation number 3. So we have three equations but four unknowns. But notice that the unknowns T1 and T2 appear only as the difference between T1 and T2. So we can actually replace uh, unknowns uh, are alpha 1, alpha 2, and uh, let's call this quantity Q, where Q equals T1 minus T2, okay? So, so equation number 1 is basically tau 1 minus Q R1 equals um, I O1 alpha 1. And equation number two is Q R2 equals I O2 alpha two, alpha 2. Now we just need to solve, and then equation number three, of course, is alpha 1 R1 equals alpha 2 R2. And we just need to solve these uh, equations, solve for alpha 1 alpha 2 and q 
uh, how do you solve for these things? Um, well, let's, we don't really need to solve for Q, but we can eliminate it. Um, really, all we care about are these two things. So let's see how to eliminate uh, Q. We can do that by doing 1 divided by R1 plus 2 divided by R2. If you do that, what we get is uh, 1 divided by R1 is tau 1 by R1 minus Q equals IO1 alpha 1 by R1 and then plus uh, Q this is equation number 2 equals IO2 alpha 2 by R2 add everything together you get tau 1 by R1 equals IO1 alpha 1 by R1 uh, plus IO2 alpha 2 by R2 So um, what we have here um, tau 1 Um, so we can now use equation number three um, to get to replace say alpha one or alpha two. So we have I O one alpha one by R one plus I O two alpha two can be rewritten as alpha one uh, R two by R one. Oh, sorry, alpha two, alpha uh, one, R two by R one by R two. So what do we have here? We have um, this relationship. Uh, we replace everything. We can now plug in uh, I. Uh, O1 by um, by MR square by 2 if you want so um, or not so in any case we have just pull all the alphas out We can uh, plug in alpha 1, m1, r1 square by 2, r1, plus m2, r2 square by 2, r2, r1, um, and that will give us alpha 1 by 2, m1, r1, plus um uh, I had missed this R2 there. Um so what we get is uh, plus M2 R1 equals tau 1 by r1 um, so sort of simplifying all that we get alpha 1 equals 2 tau 1 divided by m1 r1 square plus m2 r1 square okay let's check this quickly
So what did we do? We had this equation, this equation. We divided this equation by R1 and this equation by R2 and we added them together. We got the Q cancel star 1 by R1 is uh, this. Um, and uh, that resulted in uh, these things. So anyway, so that's uh, alpha 1. So let's uh, so that's alpha one, and then we can plug in alpha two uh, is just alpha one r one by alpha two, um, and and we can just plug that in there. So two tau one divided by m um, one plus m two r one square times r one divided by r two. That's going to be your alpha two. So that's an answer. This is an answer. And that's it. And we can solve for Q as well if you want, but uh, that's not officially asked. Um, so that's um, another kind of transmission, essentially from gears, uh, like we discussed. Um, just to recap, this is a belt or a chain drive, um, no slip, inextensible belts, uh, taut uh, in tension. And that essentially first results in this relationship between angular velocities uh, the ratio of the angular velocities is the inverse of the ratio of the radii and uh, correspondingly we will have uh, the relationship between angular accelerations as well and then we can do a kinetics problem in other words if uh, one of them is acted upon by a torque uh, what is the angular velocity of this guy and of this guy and that you do by taking some of moments about uh, their respective fixed points and uh, just sort of using uh, the sum of moments about O1, sum of moments about O2, and then this additional no slip condition um, equation. And one sort of trick that we want, had to use was that we had uh, three equations and four unknowns superficially, but uh, it turned out that uh, uh, the equations were uh, such that you could just saw, uh, eliminate T1 and T2 simultaneously uh, because they appeared only in terms of uh, uh, this difference. Only the difference matters. Okay, so I guess we shall stop for this particular problem.